Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL, and I'm out here today on the Blue Ridge Parkway at the Craggy Gardens picnic area. Really, I think I see one other car out here, but I'm the only person out here, and this is probably the only time I've ever been out here that there weren't at least a dozen cars in this parking lot. It's a very, very popular spot along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Not far at all from my QTH uh, in terms of how the crow flies, but uh, pretty far away, about 45-minute drive, um, oddly enough. I could hike up here, but hiking up here is... Uh, I have to go up and hit the mountains to see trail. It takes a little while to do that. It would take me several hours. So I decided to drive up here today. Plus, this is kind of more of a picnic table activation today. I'm, I'm uh, going to talk to you a little bit about this, but I'm testing a piece of equipment. I also brought Hazel with me. A lot of you have asked about Hazel lately. She still comes with me to activations, but she hasn't been in any videos lately. Uh, she's on bear patrol. Uh, <laughs> we did see really close to this site today um, a mom and her cub walking um, on the road down here. Uh, so she's kind of on bear patrol today. But anyway, uh, today I've set up the Chameleon MCOM 3 portable random wire antenna. I picked it because it has one of the longest um, uh, radiating lines. I think it's 71 or 73 feet long. And I probably will end up operating on the 80 meter band today, uh, starting out. Um, propagation's poor um, and unstable. So I thought maybe uh, the lower bands would treat me nicely. And so I thought this would also be a little more efficient on those lower bands having a longer radiator. I've got it uh, strung up here kind of <laughs> interestingly. Um, the radiating line goes up here. And actually, uh, Chameleon kind of thinks of everything. I wanted to tie this off in a way that the line would not interfere with anyone's heads if they walk through here. I didn't want to decapitate anyone if they walk through. So I have my hero clip uh, just tied to this dielectric uh, ring that they include on the antenna. And I have it at such an angle uh, running here that I don't think it's going to move anywhere, but um, I just have it clicked up. I could have also used, you know, uh, rope or something like that, and I do have some line in there. But this hero clip was uh, sitting here on my GORUCK pack, and I just pulled it off and used it for this. So the radiating element goes out this way, up into a tree uh, up there, and uh, back down. And you can see where my... Um, uh, Arbor's throw line bucket is down there, and uh, I'd say that the radiating element comes down just a little bit. It, it doesn't go all the way down, of course. You can see the line, kind of the yellow line there. And Craggy Garden's a great area for doing this. The trees are not super tall at this altitude. They're they're not a you're not going to find any massive uh, trees here, but they're fine for doing portable operations. I've I've been out here so many times before, and I hope to wrap this activation up. Uh, before a whole bunch of people come out. This tends to be a super busy area, and if I wait too long and it's close to lunchtime, <laughs> there'll be a lot more cars and people out here. Um, but uh, it's 9 o'clock. Uh, well, actually, it's about 9.15 right now, and uh, so it's kind of early for people to be out here. Um, anyway, Hazel and I, we're going to hop on the air here real quick, uh, but let's see if I can get this uh, video camera set up here on the little tripod. And I thought before I'd start today, really what I wanted to do was, uh, I, I'm really out to kind of test uh, the LDG Electronics Z100 Plus ATU. Uh, this ATU, I, I mentioned in a previous video, I, I used this ATU in a previous video with the um, FT817. Um, but I really wanted to test it with the ICOM IC705 because this actually has uh, a control uh, radio interface port uh, that connects up directly to my 705. And I thought we'd try that today. I have not done it yet. <laughs> As a warning, I will be discovering this along with you. And I'm, in true ham radio spirit, I haven't even looked at the manual or anything. So um, the Z100 Plus, though, I'm familiar with LDG Electronics uh, because, well, number one, they uh, recently became a sponsor of the SW Welling Post and QRPer.com. And uh, I was really happy to put them on because they've been a great uh, company making uh, fantastic equipment um, for ages now, for decades, I guess. It's maybe almost up to two decades, maybe more. Um, I My experience with them is I owned one of their original Z11 um, QRP ATUs. It was the very first automatic antenna tuner I owned. I then upgraded it to the Z11 Pro, and I've owned that uh, for more than 10 years, but for the past 10 years, for the past decade, at my QTH, the Z11 Pro has been outside in a uh, protective enclosure 
along with a, um, gosh, probably 20 year old, um, SLA battery, a sealed lead acid battery. And, um, it has been powered by that all this time and works flawlessly. Um, I charge that battery with, um, a micro M plus charge controller connected to uh, a five watt solar X panel that I've had forever. And it has just worked flawlessly. I mean, this thing, I, I can't believe how the Z11 uh, Pro has done all these years. It's RF sensing, so from inside the shack, I feed it. Uh, I should say that the ATU is at the base of my antenna at home, uh, which is kind of an ideal situation. You want to tune it at the base of your antenna. And um, uh, so I don't use ATUs in the shack because the, the Z11 is always working for me outside. And um, it's RF sensing, so when I hop on the band, if it needs to match it, it just matches it automatically. I don't have to do anything from inside the shack. Um, and it's worked well all these years, and I think one of the reasons why is LDG products tend to have a really wide voltage operating range. This is from 7 to 18 volts DC using 100 milliamps. That's really, really efficient. And usually when they're not in operation, they're they're not sucking up a bunch of power. Um, LDG's always done their equipment this way. Uh, they have a dedicated grounding post. This is stuff that's, um, um, you know, I like to look for on ATUs. Um, so you've got a grounding um, uh, post here, or at least a wing nut that you can connect to ground. Um, we have the antenna port and the transmitter or transceiver port. Now, something you will notice is these are PL259. These these accept PL259s, and um, that's a little odd for a portable uh, ATU. My um, Elecraft T1 and my um, MAT705 Plus use BNCs because BNCs tend to be used now for portable transceivers. However, this is kind of in its own little market niche because while it's portable. And it is cell, it's powered by, uh, the only thing I've done to this is I opened up the case, there's two, a screw here, a screw here, and here, here. Four screws you pull out, you lift off the top, and there's a AA battery holder that holds eight cells. Um, mine shipped with that um, when LDG sent it to me. And so I put in those eight cells, so it is uh, sort of powered by those eight cells. Those could be rechargeables if you wanted them. But also there is an external uh, port also, uh, which is wonderful. Because if you if your batteries die on your in the field, you can always just hook it up to pretty much any power source. And it's going to work as long as the polarity is correct. Um, but uh, back to the PL259s, this is almost like a, a home um, ATU that can be used in the field. Um, and I say that because this will work up to, I think, 125 watts, at least SSB. So you can hook a 100 watt transceiver up to it and use this. And uh, none of my portable ATUs will do that, to my knowledge. Um, most of them really only handle up to maybe 20 or a little more watts. Uh, so this one will do a full 100 watts, and that makes it kind of unique. It's a little bigger. Uh, and maybe if we're talking about negatives, this would be a negative for someone, you know, wanting to do something like soda. For comparison here, I've got the um, MAT705 Plus, and I've got the Elecraft T1. And if I put them on top, you can kind of see that the width of it is about the width of these two next to each other. So there's a big difference in size here. Um, you can, I mean, you can kind of see this. Um, there's a big difference in size. But, again... Uh, this is a pretty affordable unit, and I don't want to quote the price right now because I don't have it here in front of me, but um, but this uh, unit um, is um, affordable compared to some of the other options. You know, the MAT705 Plus is um, $220 US, I believe, and um, I was going to look and see if I could get my... Um, all right, yeah, so the Z100 Plus is about $150 US. So it's the least expensive of the ATUs that I have here with me today. Uh, I think the Elecraft T1, if you buy it fully assembled, is maybe $180 and maybe $20 or $30 less than that if you do as a kit, um, which is a great kit. Uh, this one, though, is $220. Uh, the thing that the Z100 Plus has uh, that I love is that, like the T1, it'll work with any transceiver any transceiver i used it with the ft817 before and all i do is press this tune button send a carrier and it'll automatically tune up and that's wonderful um, that is one of the negatives to me about the uh, 705 plus is that it just it only pairs with the 705 to my knowledge 
and I don't like that. I, I have a wide variety of QRP transceivers, so I keep this with the 705 and tend to use it with the 705, but um, to me that's a big negative. You have to have the control cable for this thing to work. And this one, if you left your control cable at home, it'll still work. Um, I should also mention that the T1, they're planning to make, um, and I think they're in the process of designing it right now, a 705 uh, cable to connect into the side here, so it'll have a control cable as well. But anyway, let's get this thing set up. Like I said, I'm doing this real time and live, so um, I, I may fumble around a little bit as I get this thing going. But uh, we'll give it a go anyway. Let's see. So I've got to connect in the control cable. I may just set the 705 on top of here, actually. Plug this in. Yeah, I think I will. Oh, and LDG sent this to me free of charge, uh, meaning they didn't charge me for this. Um, they sent it as an evaluation. Um, they became a sponsor of the SWLing Post and QRPR.com, and I think they kind of sent it as a part of that uh, package when they um, sponsored the site um, because uh, they wanted me to be able to evaluate and give them frank feedback on their equipment. Um, let's see, let me go ahead and connect in my key on the side here. This is one of the awkward things is when you're using a key and an antenna tuner, um, you do have to use up two ports on the side of the 705. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to set it here. I think you'll be able to see this hopefully. Um, let's see, do I have everything plugged in? I think I do. Hey, I'm hearing some noise. That's a good thing. Let me move this back a little bit. Now, uh, let me get things set up. I need to... Oh, I should say also that LDG actually sends the control cable, and they send this cable that plugs into the back with a little coaxial port on it. I will terminate this with Anderson power pole connectors so that when I'm in the field, if I want to, I can pull out my... Um, little ham radio workbench uh, distribution panel and can power it if I need to. Sorry about the sun today, guys. It's uh, kind of in the way here. Um, whoops. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's... Now, I, I should also mention, I have my 705 set up so that it doesn't just automatically start tuning uh, if I go to a new frequency. I don't like that because I don't want to tune up on some top of someone by accident if I forget to tune up. So um, I will go ahead and we'll try to do this like we do the others. Let me see if I just press tuner. Okay. Okay, we've got a good match. <laughs> it looks like. I guess it did do uh, tuning there. It may be that 80 meters is not very hard to tune up on this. Um, I'm not really seeing anybody on the bands right now, which makes me a little nervous if I'm being honest here. I hope propagation's not just awful, awful. Let's see. Now I'm also setting up my um, Microsoft Surface Go on the side. I will actually log to this. It'll save me a little bit of time later. Logging is, um, I like doing it on paper. In fact, I prefer doing it on paper all the time. But at some point, you have to transfer it to a file format that the POTA people can upload. And so, here we go. I use N3FJP software. Uh, I, like, uh, I like that logging. It's the AC log. I like using it. I think a lot of POTA people use it um, because it's just so kind of user-friendly. And there's a great video out there I probably should link to um, that shows how to set this up, how to shut up, set up AC log for POTA. Because there are some things you have to put in here. You have to put in, uh, there are some um, fields like um, MySig info. That's where you put in uh, your K3378. That's where you put in the um, park number. Uh, so there's a lot of reflection. It's a really bright sun out here today. <laughs> this was in the shade a moment ago, but oh well. Um, let's see here. I'm not hearing a lot on uh, 80 meters, but I'm gonna give this a go anyway. 
So let me just make sure I've got the time correct. This is probably going to be closer to 1330 UTC. Uh, band 80 meters. Make it CW, which is what I'll use. And AC log will take care of the rest. That should be a long enough one to grab the attention of the reverse beacon network, which would be nice. Okay, here we go. Let's use our uh, keyer memories here. I do have a little bit of internet service, not much. I will look here and see if I can uh, tell if I've been spotted. Haven't been spotted yet. I'll give this a go then. Now keep in mind, I'm running five watts. Oh, and the um, Z100 Plus can be tuned up with as much as just, uh, I think, 0.1 watts, so one-tenth of a watt, which is great for QRP stuff. One thing I have to remember to do, um, the Blue Ridge Parkway runs through both North Carolina and Virginia, so I need to make sure that I signal that this is North Carolina. That makes a difference. I wrote NC on here to remind myself, but <laughs> who knows if that'll work. And while I get a chance, I'll drink a little water. It's nice having the transceiver do the work for you. Boy, it almost feels like summer today. It's actually warm. It's one of those days where it's warmer at a higher altitude than it is a lower altitude. Almost like an inversion. It's so quiet though, listen to how quiet the receiver is. There's no noise out here and I don't even think there are any power lines nearby. None of the buildings out here I think have power to them, so um, it is a really RFI quiet area. But I would have expected to see a few more signals maybe on the um, waterfall, so that may mean that 80 meters is not doing that well right now. Which is kind of the opposite of what I would have thought, but, but hey. It is what it is, right?
so I can pretty much guarantee that Mike has spotted me now. It also means my signal's making it into Ohio, for what it's worth. That again was for the reverse beacon network, basically. Oh, it's eerily quiet. I'll do the beacon mode again. You know, the reverse beacon network functionality may not be working today on the POTA site. I'm just going to spot myself to the uh, WWFF site today, but um, unfortunately the site was down when I tried to do that. So many of the parks, in fact all the original parks in the POTA network were also a part of the worldwide flora and fauna. So you can see here, actually, Mike spotted me, and you can see here, this K8RAT, I think you can see at least, um, it'll say on here USNC and USVA, um, which means that the park is in two different areas. When you submit your logs, you have to mention if you're in, um, in North Carolina or Virginia. And there are a lot of multi-park areas like that, so um, national trails tend to be that way, parkways tend to be that way, and there are even some national forests and things probably that cross boundaries uh, for states, and you have to just let people Two down, eight to go. If I would have thought about this before I left, I would have brought my HT with me and tried to make contact with my daughters and wife back home at the QTH because I'm pretty sure... There may be some fading or something here.
I didn't end that one with D-E-K-4-S-W-L. I thought someone may have also been on the frequency there waiting, and I thought they'd probably jump in. Hey, that's four on, um, four on 80 meters. That's not too bad. I may move that up to 80, uh, to 40 meters here in a second, though. Because at the end of the day, I want to try this uh, ATU and see how well it tunes up everything. Okay. Let's try something. Let's try 160. I'm not even going to worry about whether or not someone's on frequency. Got a one-to-one -one match. Okay, that's good to know. I'm not going to transmit here. This would be a really poor time of day to do this. Yeah, 70s or 40s way more alive here. Okay, I'll go ahead. I don't hear anybody here. I'll go ahead and... You can hear it working a little bit. Always note that in the log. I'll move over here on my other log and note the band change because that is one thing I have been known. When I first started doing POTA, I would forget to do that. And I, would, I couldn't remember what bands I'd worked someone on. There's a little QRM there, but... Ooh, that's really loud. Okay, here we go. I'll stay on 7063. Actually, you know what? Let's move away from that noise there. Let me move down to... I'll do 7058.5 if no one's there. Yeah, actually, um, Mike's telling me that the RBN is not, or the POTA network is not pulling from the RBN right now, the reverse beacon network, which is the reason why I'm very happy I have internet access out here today, else it'd be hard to be spotted. Although I do have friends that are listening out for me and that sort of thing, but... I like this tuner. And actually, it's probably roughly the same size as the ICOM... AH705, which is going to be ICOM's uh, ATU, and I do plan to review that ATU. They're going to send it to me on evaluation uh, for an evaluation on loan, and I hope to have it for a couple weeks and maybe take it out. It's funny, though, with a tuner, people think of them as tuning an antenna. Actually, all they're doing is making a match to the antenna. Uh, they're matching the impedance, so as long as it matches the impedance, it's doing its job. I fully expect the 705 will do that, but it'll be interesting to see how big it is. I've seen it in some videos, and it looks like it's almost the width of the, or the length of the top of the 705. Ah.
<laughs> you know, I got my filter wide open. There we go. Pennsylvania. Okay, so I've got Ohio, Pennsylvania, which are normal uh, spots I would expect to get on 40 meters from North Carolina. So I've got six contacts now. So uh, earlier I should have said I had the filter on the one position which was wide open and that's the reason I was hearing an adjacent signal that sounded like it was on top of me but it wasn't and um, contact. Sorry for the shadow here on this, but I can't really change that. We're on eight contacts now. POTA is a little more challenging than summits on the air to get your needed ones, your needed contacts for a valid activation mainly because Parks on the Air and I think Worldwide Flora and Fauna both require 10. There is one cool thing though. Um, see, Mike here
So, um, whoops, I cut him off a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that, 88V, 88EV. So uh, what I was saying is, uh, the cool thing about Park, so Mike actually gave me a contact on 80 meters and a contact on 40 meters. Those count as two separate contacts. bad thing as I'm hitting these. Oh, it's N4 OW. So I'll repeat his call sign so he knows I got it. So I'm at my 10 now, which is nice. But um, in parts on the air, even though it's 10, one person can operate, can contact you twice if it's on different bands or different modes, and it counts as two separate contacts. That is not the case in summits on the air. Uh, in summits on the air, it has to be unique contacts uh, for those four, but it's only four that you need. And quite a lot of times on summits, you can do that with an HT. Um, Oh. KN three A. Always good to get you in the log, Scott. Scott's one of the regular subscribers here on the YouTube channel, and there are a lot of regular subscribers that'll contact in sometimes. Um, but I often forget to uh, mention it, and I got to admit I'm horrible with remembering call signs and you guys will just have to forgive me. <laughs> I'm really bad about it. I kind of have alphabet soup in my head. correctly. I wasn't really paying attention. Okay. somebody there. I didn't hear the number. I think there's maybe one more letter, at least. I 
I think I got that right. New Hampshire, that's nice, on 40. He was a little weak, but not too bad. Okay, that's signaling a QSY. Now I'm going to move up to the... 30 meter band. Listen here for just a second. This could possibly be, I don't know, maybe I'll do a little bit of 30 and then do a little bit of 20. I don't expect those to be stellar bands today. I really don't. Um, let's see. I don't hear anybody there. Yeah, we got a good match already. 1-3 one, to 1. It's not bad at all. I bet you I could probably get it to do an even better match if I wanted, but this is fine. Put 30 meters on here. So yeah, I guess back to what I was saying, POTA can be challenging to get an activation complete, um, whereas with summits on the air, it's kind of funny, I, I feel like when I'm on a summit, first of all, I'm in a really good spot for propagating. Um, now on HF, it matters less, but with an HT on VHF and UHF, if you're anywhere close to a populated area, like one of the larger cities, you can probably get all of your contacts just with an HT and completely do a soda activation. So soda is actually, you know, one of the better activities for people who just have their tech license because uh, you don't need HF privileges. Um, I know a lot of people like in the uh, Southern California and some of those areas, they can do all of their soda, everything just with an HT. Um, but, it, you know, it, it is, um, I guess it can be a little challenging if you've got really bad propagation or really poor antenna set up to get four, or if you live in a country, um, you know, where um, you're isolated. Like if you're doing soda and you're out in the middle of the Pacific somewhere uh, where you don't have a whole lot of people around you and maybe HF requires some decent propagation to get to areas where uh, you'll have hunters and chasers, um, that could be challenging, but in most of North America and Europe, uh, so does, I think, a lot easier to get your four that you need. Of course, the one thing is with soda is you're usually using QRP. Uh, very few people run a 100-watt soda um, because most people are hiking in, and, um, yeah, it's just the way it is. By the way, I just found out that my buddy Mike spotted me to the POTA network because the POTA network still isn't working with the reverse beacon network right now. We may start hearing people come in. I'll try to get a little water before anybody calls in. see that a little bit better. I don't know. I guess you can see it. It's hard for me to look at the camera and see exactly what you're able to see because there is so much. It's such a high contrast day today. One of the things I was doing earlier when I was messing up is I was hitting these. I was just brushing these and when I do that, that affects the contacts and that's the reason why my contacts were acting funny. Or if you squeeze it up here at the top, it will. Holding at the back is fine.
Boy, I, I hear a very weak signal. so buried down in the noise. I, I'm going to have to wait a little bit. Maybe the band will change and I can hear them. Hazel's just off to the side over here, looking at the birds. Usually, what she likes, what she likes around here is we they we have red red squirrels around here. We call boomers, and they will drive her insane. Fortunately, they're not out here this morning, or you would hear her whining and <laughs> pointing, and she's got just enough German short hair pointer in her that she will do that. She really needs a call sign. This could be a multi-op operation. Sounds like I hear something in there. I don't think propagation's that well, working that well in these higher bands. I wonder who that is. <laughs> it's K3UG. Actually, he's way weaker than 559. Mike, in case you're watching this, sorry I gave you a 559. You really needed like a 229. I could just barely pick you out of the noise there, but my this is the thing about CW. It's a muscle memory thing, and my muscle memory sent out a 559. And after I did it, I didn't want to correct myself, so there you go. Um, okay, you know what? I'm going to QSY. I'm mainly doing this 
Of course, I don't need the contacts, but I'm mainly doing this to test the tuner. I'm not seeing a ton of signals out there. Let's go ahead and tune up. I think it's safe. About a one, two to one. Excellent. Probably futile after I've been tuning up, but hey. We'll see if we get anybody on 20. I, I won't spend a long time here. Maybe five minutes, if that, calling. If I don't get a lot of responses. I am spotted because I spotted myself just now. I had just enough internet to do it. This is a kind of a marginal area. I, I, I wouldn't want to always trust being able to have internet here, but uh, most of the time I do. When you go to a park, especially one that's you know, sort of far away or in a national forest, always assume you might not have internet service and try to work around it. I've even gone to sites before where I had internet service and then maybe the seasons changed and leaves were on the trees or something and that had an effect on the um, silk signal. And if you can't spot yourself or you don't have someone looking out to spot you, it's almost like you don't exist uh, in the networks. You have to have somebody who just happens to be cruising by, hearing your CQ call, CQ poda or CQ soda or whatever, and um, then they have to take it upon themselves to go spot you. And that's about the only way that you'll get your activation going. That is, if you're operating single sideband, if you're operating CW, if the reverse beacon network functionality is working um, with the poda or soda site, then hypothetically that should spot you automatically. Fourteen, that's not too bad. Looks like I've done it in about 30 minutes. So contact every two minutes, that's not too bad at all. I'm going to call it QRT here in a second though because I need to head on back to the QTH. Hazel's had breakfast yet. She had a little doggy friend come by and visit this morning. <laughs> we live out in the middle of nowhere, but there are some uh, dogs sort of out in the neighborhood that'll come by and visit, and it's funny. They have a really active social life. Um, so Hazel was playing all morning with the little neighborhood dog, and I don't think she ate breakfast. She's not exactly going to waste away, though. Are you, Hazel? Yep. Are you hungry? You probably are. <laughs> She'll be all right. Still no one here, but I promise you in an hour it'll be 11 o'clock, 11.08. And there will be a lot of people out here then. This is a really great picnic area. Even on a weekend where, um, or weekday, this is not a weekend, um, this is a pretty busy spot. Ooh, I hear somebody out there.
No, that's somebody. Oh, the band's changing on me. You know what? I'm not going to worry about uh, activating here. I have got everything I need. All I'm going to do now is move up. The band's changing, and so there's a QSO that's coming in on top. That may be what's stopping people from uh, getting me anyway. But let's go up to 17 meters. All I'm doing right now is just testing to see how well this tunes up. Yep, that did it really quickly. Yep, about a 1-2 to 1. Let's try... Um, in here. I know there's not going to be anyone here at all. Let's get to work a little bit more. Yep. Good match. Ah. What did I do? Okay, I did something. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Um, did I unplug something? Yeah, let me turn this off and... I'll have to check on that. I don't know what's going on with that there. Uh, let see what I've done. Oh, maybe I'm out of, oh, I bet I'm out of, that's it, I bet I'm out of the, um, uh, I'm probably out of band. Let's try this. What am I doing? Here we go. As I unplugged it and plugged it back in. See, it recognizes it. I need to see what I've done. I'm sure this is probably not the... Uh, this definitely handles uh, these frequencies. It's definitely designed to do that, so... There we go, it's tuning now. Yeah, okay, so maybe it was just with, that it was in within its um, Yep, good. Okay, so that's about a 1.3 to 1. So yeah, uh, this works really well. Um, I don't know what's going on down here. I don't have my band plan with me, and I'll be very honest with you. Um, 12 meters, I operate that so infrequently, I can't remember the band edges for it uh, right off the top of my head. I actually have a, a chart in the car in one of my backpacks, but I'm not going to go get that to find out. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so um, I think this uh, worked out pretty well. Um, we'll uh, I'll check on what was going on there, a reason why I wasn't able to tune up there, and it could have been that this was already in tune and it didn't uh, bother uh, trying to tune up. But that's the uh, Z100 Plus ATU, and I've got, let's see, a total of 14 um, logged, which is fine by me, uh, frankly. Um, that's enough uh, for this uh, day. This is more about testing that ATU. And I think Hazel's probably ready to go. You ready to go, girl? Yeah, you are, I think. And um, I just heard some people pull up here. And like I said, in about an hour, this will be busy, even on a weekday. Uh, it's such a pretty day. A lot of people come out here for a picnic. There's a wonderful hike that you can take up through here. You can get to Craggy Dome, I think, even from here um, and to the visitor center uh, from a, a, a path and the Mountains to Sea uh, trail uh, comes in close by. If I wanted to, and if you ever come up here to Craggy Gardens, uh, you should know that uh, this is Blue Ridge Parkway. As you go down this uh, drive uh, from the picnic area, there's a road to the right that you'll see. That actually is a forest road. Sometimes it's uh, uh, gated uh, different times of year depending on the road conditions, but it's a dirt road. You probably want something all-wheel drive, but I, I would use pretty much any car on it. I just wouldn't use maybe a low-to-the-ground uh, uh, sports car, but it's not uh, four-wheel drive stuff. 
Um, but that's actually a part of Pisgah National Forest and the Pisgah Game Land. So that's actually a two for site. And if I wanted to add two more to my log or to my um, contacts today, I would go do that. I mean, I could go out there and activate that really quickly and I'd have two more sites. I could do three in pretty short order, but I don't want to do it today. I need to get back to the house. I've got some projects. I'm actually working on a kit right now, a crystal radio kit I want to work on and um, got some other things to do. So, um, uh, but just keep that in mind. If you're ever up here, check 